Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the results of my five star predictions. Let's get started. About two months ago, I created a video talking about the books that I thought were going to be five star reads. I thought I was going to love these books. I thought they were going to change my life. Spoiler alert, they didn't. In this video, which I will link above and down below, I talked about nine different horror slash thriller books that I thought I was gonna love. And this is the video where I talk about how I was wrong about almost all of them. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do is work from least best to best. Two of the books I was so disappointed with that I, I've already got rid of them, and those were Ararat and The Luminous Dead. These were both not great for me. Specifically, I didn't like The Luminous Dead almost at all. The entire reading experience was not good. Ararat, on the other hand, was okay, but I wasn't like crazy about it. I didn't think it was scary. I didn't feel connection to anything. It was all right. We'll start with The Luminous Dead. The Luminous Dead is about a woman who goes on an expedition on another planet through these like caves. She's gonna be paid a shit ton of money for it. She's gonna retire, except some creepy shit starts happening and she might die. The Luminous Dead was boring as fuck and repetitive as fuck and nothing happened and yet everything happened. I felt no connection whatsoever with the story, with the character. I didn't care what fucking happened. All of it was just bullshit. And by the end of it, it was just some stupid bullshit that didn't fucking matter, like at all. Zero out of 10 would not recommend. I hated this book and I could not have been more wrong about it in terms of five star prediction. Like I was so wrong. It's not scary. The sci-fi slash world building is like mediocre at best. The character development is like lackluster and one dimensional. The plot is repetitive and stupid. I did not enjoy it. Let's also discuss Ararat. I forget who it's by. I don't own this book anymore. I've already gotten rid of it. I'm not crazy about it. So basically Ararat is about this couple who are like, you know what, baby, instead of getting married, let's just go to this mountain and look for stuff because we're cool. <laughs> they go to this mountain and it's this cave thing. They, they find out that Nora's Ark is up there somehow. And they're like, wow, this is crazy. But then also it's like winter and like there's a huge blizzard on the mountain and then they get stuck up there. The only thing is there's like something else up there too that wants to murder all of them. And from that synopsis, you would think like, yes, this is gonna be a crazy adventurous ride. We're gonna have so much fun. No, no, we're not. <laughs> this book sucked. And like, it was better than The Luminous Dead, but only marginally. The issue this book has is that there are zero stakes. You go into the book, you have some semblance of these who these people are, but you don't really connect with them in any way. I didn't really feel like I cared about what happened to the people in the book. I didn't care if they were like murdered or whatever. There just, there just wasn't enough like craziness in this book for me. I didn't feel the tension. I didn't feel the need to care about what happens. I just read it kind of feeling like lackluster. Books that I still have, uh, one of which I'm going to be getting rid of as soon as possible. And that is The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. This is an adult thriller novel following a woman who is victimized by a home invasion, a burglary, She's all paranoid, she's all freaked out, and then her work is like, hey, to chill out, you should go on this cruise, it'll be fun, it'll be great. And she's like, okay, so she goes on the cruise, but then she thinks that she hears somebody being thrown overboard, and no one believes her. Everyone thinks that she's best, you're crazy. I got literally 50% of the way through this, and then DNF'd it. I didn't even finish it. I hated it. It's boring. Like, it's actually just boring. I had such high hopes for this because Ruth Ware, as I'm sure you know, like, fucking went through with it with The Turn of the Key. I love that book. So I was like, yes, this bitch is gonna turn it out again. She's gonna do it again. We're gonna have so much fun. It's gonna be thrilling and crazy. And no, it wasn't. It was trash. The main character is an alcoholic. They're like, oh, she's unreliable. Like... <laughs> That's new for thriller. The plot goes so slowly. Like you would think that being victimized in a home burglary would make the plot thicken, would make it more interesting. You would think that her 
having this like drinking problem mixed with her paranoia and mixed with her thinking that someone's been murdered would be like exciting and crazy. It's not, <laughs> it's really not, it's really boring. You don't give a single flying fuck about anything that happens. This is trash, it's actual trash. I hated it so much and I, I couldn't even finish it, honestly. I don't give a single fuck about what happens. I don't care if the woman in cabin 10 was murdered. I don't care about any of it, I really don't. Now onto the books that were actually okay. Most of them just being okay. Uh, one of those I felt was Under the Skin by Michelle Faber. I had so many hopes for this. I've literally owned this book for over like three years. I've always felt like as soon as I get to that book, it's just gonna blow my mind. And I so I was in no rush. Unfortunately, my mind is not blown, like at all. This is okay. It's not, it's not a bad book, but it's mediocre. And I wasn't crazy about it. This follows a young woman who picks up hitchhikers and she does something with them. I don't want to say what is a spoiler. The book feels slow. Nothing much happens in the book. That's probably the point of it. Michelle Faber probably wanted to create this like slow creeping thing where things are slowly sort of introduced to the reader to create tension or whatever. To me though, I felt like it was just slow and there was no tension really. I just, I don't know, I didn't connect <laughs> with the main character of this book and I didn't connect with the main message. I understood it and I thought that it was powerful. It seemed like there was just a wall though between me and the book, between me and the writing, between me and the characters. And I don't know if that's me and like the space that I was in when I read it or if that was the book. Either way, in my opinion, this was okay. I give it three stars. It's like middle of the fucking road. Take it or leave it, you know? It was not five stars. It's a bummer to me. Another middle of the road book that I read that I thought was gonna be five stars, but turned out not to be, was The Girl in Red by Christina Henry. This is a adult fairy tale retelling of The Little Red Riding Hood. Most of the people in the world have died and everything is just in chaos. There's not a lot of people left and the people that are left are just trying to survive and trying to like get by. And some people are just crazy and like want to kill everyone. This girl is trying to get to her grandmother's house to get to safety basically. And it follows her trying to survive. In comparison to Lost Boy by Christina Henry, I liked Lost Boy more. I had high hopes for this. I had hopes that it would be more gruesome, more crazy, more, more. <laughs> Unfortunately, it just wasn't. I felt, again, I felt like there was something between me and the plot, between me and the writing, between me and the characters. There was something that was prohibiting me from really giving a fuck. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's the book. Either way, I thought that, I thought that this was an okay book. I would recommend that you read it. I think it's fun, but I don't think that you should expect anything crazy from it. I liked it a little bit more than Under the Skin. Okay, now we're moving on to books that I actually really fucked with, that I really enjoyed. Let's talk about Uzomaki by Junji Ito. This is a horror graphic novel. This was released in like 2002. I had no idea that it was released that long ago, but it was. Anyway, I really, really, fucked with this. I loved it so much. The only reason it doesn't get a perfect rating from me is because it did drag a little bit in some parts. This follows a young girl who lives in this town where the town is becoming cursed by spirals. I really really enjoyed it. It is really fucked up. It's like really fucked up. A lot of the imagery will stick in your head. Specifically, specifically this imagery for me, fuck me up, 100% fuck me up. Like I saw it and I was like, oh, I hate that. I hate it so much. And now I've shown it to you, so you're welcome. A lot of the imagery will stick with you. It's horrifying, it's gruesome. It like literally doesn't shy away from just like making you feel uncomfortable. It's really good. I'm pretty sure I gave it four stars out of five, I think. Next, I want to talk about Blackwater by Michael McDowell. I loved this so much. 
like so much. Michael McDowell is amazing and I've talked about this book a million times so I'm gonna be really quick with this but basically it's about a town, it's about a family and basically just their lives. Specifically with this woman named Eleanor who's like a sea monster, who's like a swamp monster, who's gonna kill people and children. It's so good. <laughs> if you like slice of life, if you like sort of subtle horror, this is so good. I really, really love this. I gave it 4.5 stars. It wasn't quite five stars for me, but I still really, really fucked with it. I still really loved it. Second last book that I wanna talk about is Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez. Now I can't find the my copy. I literally have no idea what fucking happened to it. Camp Slaughter is about a group of college kids and other people who go to this like campsite to, to go to this cabin for like a vacation. Unbeknownst to them, there is a cannibal in their midst is gonna like murder them and eat them. Yeah, <laughs> like you can't get more simple than that. You can't get better than that. Also, the cannibal wears human faces, like he wears skin, like it's, it's so good. If you love some fucked up body horror, if you love just slaughter books, you need to read this because it's so good. Sergio Gomez, first of all, is so good at writing. His character development, while in some aspects are weak, um, in other aspects, specifically like with the cannibal, are just like completely fleshed out. Not only that, but his kill scenes are so good. <laughs> really, really creative. I loved Camp Slaughter. I loved it so much. It's not a perfect book, in my opinion. The ending was a little bit like lackluster, but I really did love it and I would recommend that you pick it up. I'm pretty sure I also gave it 4.5 stars. We have one book left. I'll have you know that it is the only five star book in the books that I chose. I read it. In one day, it's insane. I loved it so much. I could not put it down. And bitch, he did it again. Uh, the Sybil Plan by Scott Smith. Scott Smith, who wrote The Ruins, is literally the fucking best. Like the dude gets it. He fucking gets it. He knows what is up. He's so good. I'm obsessed with this. The Simple Plan follows two brothers, Hank and Jacob. They are out with their friend and they find a plane covered by snow. And inside the plane is a corpse and a duffel bag. And inside the duffel bag is $4.4 million. And uh, Hank comes up with a real simple plan and then it goes from there. And all I, all I can say is that this book is insane. This book is crazy. You have like a slight idea of where it's going in the beginning of the novel and then it just takes a hard fucking left. Like shit goes haywire. I know that I often say that books are crazy but this is like literally fucking crazy. This is insane. I loved it so much. I can't even describe with words of what Scott Smith does with chaos and the way that he sort of hones in on these characters, tiny, minuscule flaws, and then throughout the book, they just become larger and larger and larger. It's insane, it's so good. If you take anything from this video, it's to read A Simple Plan by Scott Smith. It will not let you down, just, like guarantee, like swear to God. Those are all of the books that I read for my five star predictions. Let me know down below if you have different opinions about these books. If you think they're five stars, I would love to know. I'm gonna make another five star prediction video. I'm gonna think this time a little bit more about my choices and be more selective with it. Let me know down below if you have any books that you think I would think are five star. It didn't make any fucking sense, but you know what I mean. Either way, thank you so much for watching don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about scary shit and five star shit and all kinds of shit i hope you have a wonderful day i hope you're all doing really well i'll see you in my next one bye